Amen. Yeah, praise God. Amen. Amen. I thank God uh, for this opportunity which he has given me. It is a great honor, church, to stand before you, not because I am very qualified beyond all of you or any one of you, but it is by God's grace. In a special way, I wish to appreciate the leadership of this church for granting me this opportunity to speak the word of God. So I welcome all of us eh, into this topic which we are going to handle today. And I believe God is going to speak to all of us. Those who are watching me from your dormitories, wherever you are, may the Lord reach you from that point. And then he's going to transform all of us. The one that's the God, God does not gather his people in vain, but wherever he gathers them, he has a word for all of us. So it is God speaking to all of us. His word is, is very sharp and double than it is able to separate the soul and spirit, seeking the deeper things of human art, that the inner man may be exposed unto the word of God, and he may be transformed and it may be presented before him holy and blameless. So today we are going to look at this topic called to inner purity. That's what we are going to talk about, called to inner purity. Anytime in history God is calling people, when you read the scriptures, when you hear the word of God and he's calling people for himself, According to me, it appears that God is calling them to inner purity and inner transformation. Any man who has ever been called by God, if God ever opened his mouth and he called men for his ministry, he has always called them to transformation. And this is inner transformation. It is the subject in which we are going to address ourselves. And then there is Matthew 5, 8. This verse will be very instrumental in our discussion of the word of God today. That blessed are the pure in art, for they will see God. This verse, we will go along with it until uh, to the end. Let's go to the next slide. God to inner purity. The next slide, please. Yeah, I want to lay this background of you can see here there is a, a photo of pure gold. Gold in its initial stage, it is not found in this form. For the people who extract these metal ores, it is not found pure, but this one is pure gold. So purity, we are talking about clean and unmixed. When we talk about purity, I want you to have this aspect or element of clean and unmixed. Then when we talk about the purity of art, I would not want you to consider the organ which is pumping blood in art, but I want us to focus on the mind, the will, and the emotions which are within us. The art of man, just like gold, is not found pure naturally. If you Take anybody from nowhere and then you examine their art. Naturally, they will not be pure, just like this gold. But if the gold has been refined, it has been taken through a rather refinement, then it can be found, as you can see it, the pure it is. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 17:9 that the art of man is deceitful. Naturally, the art of man is very deceitful. And that's why we are talking about inner transformation. That there is a process through which art needs to go through for it to reach a level through which God is calling people to the inner purity. So blessed are the pure in art, for they will see God. Just have this photo of this, of, of this gold in your, in your mind as we go through. Because we shall use it uh, to try to think about our art and what God can do in our arts leading us to inner transformation. Next slide. Praise God. Amen. The art. This is the art. I've just said in previous slide that the mind and the will and the emotion is what I'm talking about when I speak about, about inner transformation. The art. This is the art. 
and I want this photo, I put it here. The transformation which we are talking about is, is inner, not the outward. Like when I look you, I cannot see the outward appearance of you. But there is art is inward. So when I talk about inner transformation, it is your art. But Matthew, mind, will, and emotions. When you read in the book of Matthew 23, 25 to 26, you find Jesus there. And Jesus here is confronting the Pharisees. He says that they used to wash the cups from outside. But from within, the cups were still dirty. He was talking about inner transformation. He is confronting the Pharisees who were more concerned of the outer appearance or outer observance of the law. He realized that the Pharisees were praying long prayers, but the poor in the land were being deprived of their rights. These were the people who had been entrusted uh, to, to defend the poor, but he is confronting. So generally, when Jesus is teaching in his sermon, when you read the Gospels, you find that Jesus is targeting the human art. Jesus all, always targeted the human art because he knew unless man or a woman has been transformed from within, then he cannot see God. He cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Not like um, the people who are teaching his contemporaries, who are focusing on the outward. Himself, he wanted to change the source of life. That's the art. This, from whence the spring of life comes from. He knew that if these people, their hearts could be pure and could be changed, then their lives would be, would be straightened and they will be able to serve him. The Pharisees only concentrated on the outward moral reformation. The kind of trans inner transformation I'm talking about, it is not a transformation which can merely be achieved by an outward reformation. That when the word of God comes unto you, that you say, Brother Daniel, uh, you know, I just have some errors, uh, and this one will be corrected later. And then I try to change from within, from, from outside. It, when Oscar mentioned during the discipleship that the transformation comes from within, then I knew that then the Lord is speaking and has already started speak, to speak unto people. So Jesus wanted to transform the art, which is the source of all life. All thoughts, all words, and all action, they come from the art. If my speech appears to be seasoned, but then the content of my art is not pure, then it is to the west. If my actions appear to have some form of godliness, but when my, the content of my art is weighed or is examined, it is found that it is not pure, then I'm losing it because there's no inner transformation. The, the source of life, the source of our thoughts and action, likes and dis dislikes, is what we are calling the art. And it's what we are targeting today in the inner transformation. Next slide. Blessed are the pure in art. Blessed are the pure in art, for they will see God. Seeing God was one of the greatest things which men can achieve here on earth. To see God or to know God. Blessed are the pure in art, for they will see God. What is to see God and to know God? The highest prize that a man can achieve in this world is to know God Amen. or to see God. When Jesus is saying, blessed are the pure in heart, he is basically promising the greatest of all through which men could achieve. Because God's desire always has been to be with men, to be in fellowship with man. And he has always sought the heart of, the heart of man. Moses cried in his desperacy, situation when he wanted to see God and then God tells him I will show you my glory physically that's like to see him and then for those who have read Exodus you know that this account in Exodus 
when the goodness of, the, of God passed through Moses. And then he only saw the glory of God at the, the back as God passes. He desired to see the Lord. Prophet Jeremiah wrote, that is chapter 9, verse 23 to 24. He's talking, with, you can project this if you can. Jeremiah 9, 23 to 24. He's saying that let the wise not boast of their wisdom. He's saying that let the strong not boast in their strength. He said, let those who are rich not boast in their richness. But let those who boast, boast that they know me. Let them boast that they know me and they understand me as the Lord. They know I am the Lord who exercises, exercises justice, righteousness, and all this. Let not the wise. Basically, when you read this scripture, you realize that the wisdom of this world, the riches of this world, the strength of this world, they are subordinated to knowing God. That like knowing God is more beyond all these things which we, as we aspire. Knowing God is something so great. And God says, let those who boast, boast that they know him, that they have seen him, they have had fellowship with him, and that they have walked with him. You can go back. And then Paul the Apostle, there, he says that there are things he has counted loss or like rubbish to gain Christ. Paul, we know him from his epistles. He was an academ academician. Paul, having attained uh, his like, doctorate in the University of Tarsus and uh, G Gamaliel, Gamaliel, the, 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 the teacher of the law, that was his, like, his supervisor. <laughs> he had attained everything and he had gone through school very well and practiced to a level of Pharisee. And then he says, I have lost all this to gain Christ. Like, this wisdom and this fame and all these things, I, I count them as mere rubbish so that I may gain Christ. Because knowing God is what everyone, man, every man should desire, to know him. We can go to the next slide. Then as we go to the next slide, think about what have you lost to gain Christ? What have you lost to gain Christ? Like Paul says that the holiness that which he has now is not from the works of the law. The holiness which he has is not from his education or, or, or observance of anything which is written or given to him, but it comes from Christ. From Christ. And then he is ready to lose everything so that he may gain this. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Then to see God, the pure in heart, see God. Blessed is the pure in heart, for they will see God. To see God as it is to know Him, and to think about Him, and to have fellowship with Him. We, how do, what is to see God, and how does we see God? The pure in art, they will surely see him. We can see God in life. We can see God in circumstances. We can see God in creation. We can see God in scripture. We can see God in worship. We can see God in the church. There are men and women who have seen God in their lives. When you read Genesis 28, you get the story of Jacob on his journey from 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 Beersheba to Aram. Then he reaches a place and then he he sleeps somewhere, he gets a stone and then lies his head there. And the Bible says when he slept, his eyes were opened. The pure in heart, when they they are in deep sleep, they can see the invisible. Like they close their eyes and then they see the invisible. Because God is 
God will obviously show himself to such people. In his, in, in his dream, in his dream he saw a straight way to heaven. And then the angels were coming down and going up. And then when he wakes up, he says that this is the door to heaven. It is the house of God. Then he, has, he sees God. God introduces himself to those who are pure in heart. Mm -hmm. So they see God in life. Many in the scriptures and among even us have seen God in their circumstances. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It is possible to see God in circumstances. There are situations in life where a Christian will be exposed such that if they depend on themselves, they cannot go ahead. But at those circumstances, it is possible for them to see God in those circumstances. If I was to ask people here, many will give testimonies of how they have seen God in their stories, how they have seen God in difficult situations. And even today, there are those who are going to see God in their circumstances. Amen. Even today, there are those who are going to see the hand of God in whatever they are going through. Amen. Because of, of the purity of art, which is given to them by God. So they are going to see God in their circumstances. May we always desire to see God in our circumstances. In creation, they see God in everything, the pure in art. They see God in merely everything, even in the creation. When they were worried about the future, Jesus told them, Did you see the birds of the air? They do not plant, they do not work, but yet they are sustained. The pure in heart see God in creation. Amen. He, when they were worried about what they, how they are going to survive, he asked them, Did you see the flowers of the field? How they were well, how, how God has clothed them. The pure in heart. David in Psalms, you see the greatness of God in the creation. <coughs> they see God in the creation. And then they, they see God also in scripture. Amen. Amen. How many have been seeing God in the scripture? Yeah. When your heart is opened, and when the filthiness in the heart has been taken away, then the blindness, the spiritual blindness also vanishes. And then you are, you, your spiritual eyes are opened and you can see God in all, all in, in, in creation, in life, in circumstances, in creation and in scriptures. There are beauties of, in Christianity. There are beauties in life. There are beauties in the word of God which the impure in art can never see. They can never be happy or they, they cannot get satisfaction from the word of God. The impure in art, they are spiritually blind. They are things which they cannot see. As much as we are giving testimonies of people seeing God, in all these scenarios, even the word of God, the impure in art cannot see these things. They will not see the beauty of salvation, for instance. They will not see the beauty in generosity. They will not see the beauty in serving others. Because of the content of their art, they are blind spiritually. They cannot see God. But the pure in art, they see God. They see God all across. And then there, there are also some auras of immoral, immoral auras which they cannot see. They don't see him. The impure in art, there are things they cannot see in life. Some auras, some things which they need to run away from. They cannot see the aura in sin. Like, because they are blind, they cannot see. They cannot see some auras which comes like things with corruption because they have been blinded in their hearts. They cannot see these things. They cannot see the beauty in doing what is good and serving God. They don't derive joy from these things. Men tend to see clearly where nothing is going to be lost. The, most, the eyes of most men they see very well when nothing is going to be lost. Like, if they have to lose something for Christ, that they may gain Christ. As much as they are, they are not going to lose anything, monetary or some pleasure, they have no problem with that. They will live only lives and they will, be, they will be counted with the sons of God are being counted. As much as they are not going to lose anything, in living some ways of lives, they are comfortable with it. But if, when it comes to pleasure, when it comes to money, the love of money and 
all these things. They are not ready. Of course, they believe that in future, maybe they will, they will be able to work on themselves. They say the future watchfulness will help us to leave these things because their eyes, spiritual eyes, have been blinded. The, the impure in that also cannot see the importance of our tournament. If they were able to see, then they, the, their inner self will be exposed and then they will go to repentance. They would, they, they would consider the state of their heart, their feelings, their thoughts, and then they would know something is wrong. But they, they cannot see because of the spiritual blindness. Then it is clear that the hypocrites will never see God while, he, while they continue in their hypocrisy. The hypocrites will never see God when they continue in their hypocrisy. People who are comfortable with the name Christian without a life of a Christian, they will certainly not see him because of the spiritual blindness which is in their hearts. Because they have not allowed God and purity which is God given by God to open their, their eyes so that they may see the beauty of God as he presents and he unveils himself. Religious custom are there, are there adherence. They, 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 they know all the, the ways as much as physical is concerned. Physical uh, observance of the law, physical appearance is concerned. They will certainly not see him. Could we have uh, religious custom adherence in the house of God? Those who know that it is on Sunday, they know where they take the bus, they know the program of the church and everything. And they follow those things faithfully. But at the end of the day, the content in their art is not touched. The art is not touched. They will certainly not see him. Amen. Amen. Yes, I have seen, and when you read the scripture, you will find that the greater sinners, the people who lived in life, in careless life once, the idolaters, the corrupt people, the mantras, when they hear the word of God, and when they reopen their heart, and when they receive it, and then they receive Christ, the lives which they live, and how they become testimonies to many. The past life to them is a, a testimony to encourage someone because they have gone through transformation, because God has modeled them. Yeah. And we thank God for such people because they are used by God to show what God can do. But on the other side, uh, there are these uh, brothers and sisters with snake-like nature who receive the word of God with gladness, like, yes, 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 but they don't mean it from their heart. Mm. When they hear the word of God, they accept it gladly, but they don't mean it from their heart. From my observation, I think that God leaves them alone, and rarely the grace, the saving grace of God comes to such people. Because they have, they have not given their heart unto God, and they are there. They, they, they are switch talkers. They give uh, very nice talks. But as much as the matter of the heart is concerned, as much as the gospel is concerned, and the purity of art is concerned, they cannot be counted in. The craft also in the, in the scripture, there are people who are very craft, who read the word of God, not to get the word of God, what the Lord is saying to his people. They will read the scripture to get the points to back up their preconceived notions and opinions. They will never get anything from the word of God. Of course, such people they cannot see the truth in the scripture because they don't want to see it. But the people who are pure in art, they are able to see God in the scripture, like I was, I was explaining here. The crafty men, those people, they will read the scripture. And if they will not find a scripture, a verse which will back up uh, their, what they want uh, to live on, they will twist the scripture which is there. To them, the word of God is like uh, a brand uh, which is meant like with wax. They can mold it the way they want. They can stretch it to cover up uh, their, their comfort zones because they want to have their own way. Such they cannot see God in the word of God. When they open the word of God, 
what they see is uh, they don't know the wife of Cain, for instance. They are doubting why some boots were, were, were canonized. They cannot receive from the word of God. Always raising doubts about the faithfulness of God and about the promises of God. They will read the Bible for very long, but always they are raising questions because they doubt the promises of God. But the promises of God, they are tested. They are tested and proven over generations. The promises of God have been tested and proven to be right. I will say that a learned person who lives such a life of handling the word of God, they will rarely receive from God. A poor woman or a man from somewhere who is not learned, but who believes that what is written in the word of God is true, and he reads it and believes in it, she will see God. Because she lives and all lives by the promises of God. And they see God in their scripture, in the scripture. Amen. Amen. They see God in worship. The pure in art who are just worshipping. They don't have double mind when it comes to worship. They sink into worship and in that worship they see God. The pure in art. The impure in art cannot see God in worship. They will see people pretending like they are worshipping. The impure in art they will see something else because we see from uh, from from with the sight from what is within. We see by our attitude, which is within. But the, but the pure in art in worship, they encounter God. Yes, sir. They also encounter God in the church. When they see the church, the pure in art, they see God. When they think about the church, they see God's people. They see a church which the gates of hell cannot overcome. They see people of God who have been named holy by him. A pure bride, bride who is waiting for the bridegroom. The impure in art will see pretenders. They will see in different states. That's the description of the church. They will see imperfection in the church. And they, they don't rejoice coming into the church because they are seeing from a transformed nature. But the pure in art, they see God in the church. Brothers and sisters, the time shall come when the pure in earth, the people who have seen God here on earth, will see him in heaven. Will again see him in heaven. Those who have experienced God, those who have known God here on earth, they will know him better in heaven. Nobody who has not seen God here on earth, they will see him in heaven. Because they will not make it. Because they never purified their hearts. They lived careless life and stable lives but they were among the church the time shall come when those who have seen God on earth shall see him again face to face in heaven Amen. blessed are the pure in earth for they will see God they will fully know him in heavenly realms which I cannot understand now because he says when he comes we shall see him and we shall be like him and we shall know him and then we shall, we shall understand him more and we shall be in fellowship with him. Amen. This is only for the pure in art who have seen God in their circumstances. They have seen God in creation. They have seen God in scripture. They have seen God in worship. And they have seen God faithfully walk in the church. For Jesus said, Behold, Lord, I am with you to the very end of ages. They see Christ in between the church. Mm -hmm. In the church. The next slide. Then the purification of art is through God's work. This is where I want to call attention of all of us to this, that the purification of art is through God's work. You see, when Jesus uh, and died for people and then he, he resurrected and then he went, for those who love the book of Acts, you see what's happening in this book. But here, I want to, to revisit uh, Peter. When Peter... Uh, as an apostle was given a mandate to preach the gospel in his uh, mind he earned a mind like this thing was for Jews and then he, he tried to some point out of ignorance or understanding he suppressed the grace of God to Jews that he, it should be condemned to Jews but God teaches him by sending uh, Cornelius who was a Gentile to him that he should speak unto him when you read uh, this verse, Acts 10:15, it is a vision 
uh, which Peter saw, that God was giving him some unclean animals to declare it impure. What God has meant pure, don't declare it impure. It is the work of God to work through the transformation of man. The art of man cannot be purified by any process of outward purification. There is no water, there is no oil which can be poured on the skin of a man to transform the art. There is no pros physical process through which we can make children for God using some, using some outward reformation or something. In the Beatitudes, what do you read? You find that Jesus said, uh, happy are the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit. Those who understand that they are poor in their spirit, in their heart, and they need more of God. And then he does not stop there. He says, happy are those who mourn. They mourn because they can see their situation and the need for Savior. The pure in heart cannot see this. They don't see the need for atonement. They think that God should just forgive people without a sacrifice. Because they have, they, they have not weighed the weight of sin. They have not never been in a situation where the weight of sin was over them. And then they felt the weight. And then the grace was shown unto them. And then they gave their lives to Christ. The purification of art is through God's work. Naturally, when, when, when you want to see, like you want to see the president of here, this country or any other, there are a lot of processes which are involved therein. Sometimes you need to write letters, emails. Sometimes you need uh, backstairs force to steer, to steer ahead your cause. But I say that those who want uh, to access God, it is only through grace, through faith in Christ Jesus, the holiness which comes through purification by the work of God. It is not the purification which comes by the doings of the law. It is the purification which is the work of God in the heart of a person. So those who go to God and then tell him, God, I'm here. It's your son or your daughter. And I pray for the sake of your son Jesus Christ that you may have mercy on me and take away my guilt and bitterness. Those access him. But those who try other methods, corruptions, and whatever, it does not work. It is only given to the simple-minded who recognize their situation and are ready to seek forgiveness through him. And when that happens, in the eyes of those people, now they can have light. Their eye, their, 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 their vision, their spiritual vision can be enlightened, that they can now see. The streams in their stream, they change direction. Immediately after this has happened, the streams of water in their, in their heart, in their heart, they are in short, I'm saying their thoughts are divinely purified. I'm saying their feelings, the content of art is divinely purified. And then they gain the sight through which they can see God. And such will see God in this life and they will also see him and know him face to face in heaven. The Holy Ghost dwells not in unclean acts. There is need to be directed by the Holy Spirit of God, but He dwells not in the acts which are impure. This is an account in Acts 8, when Peter was misering the word of God, and then there was Simon who saw that the works or the gift of the Spirit were being given by left hands. Then Simon said to apostles that he wanted to buy the gift of God. What did Peter tell him? perish with your money. For I see that there is a lot of bitterness in your heart, the content of the heart. I see that your heart is not right with God. They cannot receive from God if their hearts are not right with God. And this is a question we are posing for ourselves today, that our hearts are our hearts right with God. Because we cannot receive anything if the content of our heart, if our hearts are not pure. And we will not, never see him, and we cannot get anything mm -hmm. if there is no transformation from within, from the heart. Mm -hmm. There is need to continually confess the sin. When you read these scriptures, this is David who is crying to God that the Lord should examine his heart, and then God would lead him to the ways of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Jesus told them in John that you are. You, you, are, you are 
pure because of the word which you hear. It's not confessed. This verse is talking about confessing the sins. That if you confess your sins, then he is faithful and just and uh, forgive you. Next slide. Then there is a call to guard your heart. It says, guard your heart beyond anything else. The thing which you need to guard is your heart. Jesus borrowed this idea of where uh, your, your value is. Then your heart is there. Your heart is the explanation I gave, the thoughts, the content of the mind. Where your value is. And of course, he knew that uh, the value, many people value their riches. And he said to them, do not store up uh, your wealth mm -hmm. where rust can destroy, but store it up there. There is a, a safe place where you can destroy it because your heart will be there. Then Paul tells them that focus, put your, your attitude on things above where Christ is seated. Because when your heart focuses on those things, then your heart will be guarded. You will not expose your heart to the corruption. Your heart will be guarded. Mm -hmm. Then live by every word from God's mouth. Jesus told them by the word which I tell you, you, you are purified. The work of the word of God is to purify the content of the heart. Mm. We, I say that you cannot make, you, it, the purification of heart is by the work of God. My tongue is rushing, but I will try to finish. The purification of art is by the work of God. So you cannot do it for yourself, but you need the word of God to be fully, to be fully uh, sanctified. And then the Lord is able to present you. There is one who is able to present you faultless before his glorious presence. It's called Jesus Christ. He is able to keep you from falling. He is able to keep, to keep you strong until the day of perfection. Then always desire to know God and long for his promises. That the pure in heart will see God. The pure in heart will see God. God's desire is that we see him. Then we have to live with that attitude, longing for those promises. And then as we long for these promises, then God will transform our hearts. We shall now start loving the people of God. We shall now start loving the church. We shall now start loving, having a different view of the world because our eyes have been opened. And then we shall see the beauties in the word of God. The last scripture, this one you can project as we finish, in the Acts 9-11. This is an, an, an account in the book of Acts. I talked of, of Paul. You know what happened to him on his way to Damascus? When, the, when Jesus called him, he told Saul, why are you persecuting me? And then he became blind. Then he was led to a certain lodge. And then he was there. Then there was an unbeliever who was called Ananias. So in a vision, Ananias uh, saw a vision. And then the Lord said to him in a vision, Arise and go to the street called to Arise. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight. And inquire at the house of Judas. For the one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. Paul was a Pharisee for a very long time. And he used to pray very long prayers and uh, continually, uh, and he thought he was serving God, but he was still in blindness. But it, I think this is the first Paul's prayer. As much as there were many prayers which he was praying, Paul was praying this prayer of repentance in the house of Judas when he was blind and waiting uh, for Ananias to, to come and place his hands on him. The, this prayer seemed to have gone beyond the ceilings. This prayer went to heaven. When he met with Christ, the breakthrough was opened, and now his prayer could have an effect in heaven. And then God tells his man, now go and ask for Saul, beyond his praying. I don't know how this one has caught your heart. Maybe your heart is now grieving 
and you are in a condition like Saul, is there a person to pray? Is there a person whose, whose prayer can go to heaven? Because the prayer of a repentant who want to purify their heart, it, it disturbs heaven until somebody is sent to go and check for somebody is praying. May you be found to be that person who is praying and may your prayer have great impact in heaven. May you guard your heart always to the day of perfections. Let's pray. Bless the Lord, I thank you because you are faithful. King of glory, I thank you, King of glory, for this word which we have, we have got from you today. I pray, King of glory, that you shall bring uh, fruits to you. The Lord Jesus, that we are going to love you more and we shall learn to be transformed through you. May we go through this process of transformation. That King of glory, having been with you, Lord, here on earth and having seen you in circumstances, that we shall see you, Lord, and know you in glorious heavenly realms. I thank you, King of glory, for the church, for the brothers and sisters who are here. Lord, who can see up to the earth. I pray, Lord, should there be one who is repenting and seeking you, that you may grant mercy and victory, that they may walk in you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for special grace, Lord, to those King of glory who are calling upon your name, that God, you may empower them, King of glory, as they declare in their heart that they shall not work it for themselves, but they are ready to receive the sacrifice of forgiveness of sins from you. Lord, that you are going to be with them. In the name of Jesus, King of glory, I pray, Lord, for the church, that King of glory, you are going to keep this church Jehovah up to the day of your perfections. And none of them, King of glory, who have received you, they are going to go back to the things of the world, that they shall love you, King of glory, and, glo and grow in grace in every manner. Thank you, God, because you are faithful. I bless you and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, amen. God bless you.